It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about doing your own research. There's so much information out there when it comes to financial advice. We're going to discern between some of the good and bad financial information you need to be aware of. Bob and I are going to talk about dangerous mindsets. We're going to discuss some of the more dangerous attitudes and approaches you really want to avoid when making decisions about your finances. And we're going to go into our mailbag today. We had a lot of questions about running out of money, how do you build a portfolio to last over the long term, and we're going to break down Social Security It shouldn't be cookie cuttered. How do you make decisions about the social security for your own personal situation? You should check it out. It's going to be a great show. So Bob, we all want to feel informed about our options when making financial decisions. We don't want to be in the dark. So let's discuss the good ways and the bad ways we can inform ourselves because there's just so much information out there. And man, I don't know about you. When I turn on the TV and I watch CNBC, Fox Business News, there's almost too much information. Well, right. The only information you ever need to get is when pain capital management is on CNBC or on Fox Business or Yahoo Finance or Cheddar. Now, that's when you want to tune in. That's when you're going to be educated about how to invest and how to achieve your goals and dreams. I 100% agree with that. But unfortunately, we're not on all the time. So we have to protect our listeners from the typical financial propaganda that's out there every day. And that's you know the biggest problem, in my opinion, Bob, is like everyone that gets on those shows has a conflicting opinion. So how the heck do you make a decision about your finances when everyone's talking out of both sides of their mouth and have different opinions? Yeah, it's like the old um, you know point counterpoint show that we used to have on on the news on Sunday night, right? You're, you have one opinion which you think, wow, that sounds really good, and then they have a counter opinion which completely you know this is the other person's opinion. So you're left with you know now nah, make your own decision. You know, I think I feel bad for you today because you're out there with the internet, with TV, with radio. It's like drinking from a fire hose. You know, it's overwhelming, and I can see why you're frustrated. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I had a prospective client come in here a couple weeks ago. He's been sitting in cash now, Bob, for five years. <laughs> and and we're saying, you know, why is he sitting in cash for so long? And it's a sizable amount of money, and he's close to retirement. He said, you know, I tried to do it myself, but I just kept watching all these shows and by the time I finished watching all of them and reading everything, I was right back to square one. I didn't know to get in the market, get out of the market. I was just too confused. I finally needed a game plan. Well, I think the other problem today, Rye, is you have this financial propaganda that you and I talk about almost on a weekly basis. And you, they have these gurus. You know, I called the top in 2008. I called the top in 2001. You know, I got in at the bottom and got out at the top last week. So a lot of you are looking at this information and reading and hoping to see someone who comes on and waves that red flag, hits the bell and tells you now's the time to act. And that's the same thing happens on the buying and the selling. And you and I know there is no such thing. Yeah, that's right. It's a lot of Monday morning quarterback playing, as they say, like they've got that dude with the with the ponytail, you know, talking about all these trades he makes on CNBC, and he just tells you about how he made all this money. It's always in retrospect. It's never the next move to actually make, and that's kind of frustrating when you're trying to make decisions for the long term about your portfolio. Same thing. On, on uh, Earlier this week, we had an 800-point down day, and who do they bring on? They bring on the economist who's been bearish for 20 years. I told you so. <laughs> you know, it's like, what is that? You know, he, he got you out of the market 20 years ago or 10 years ago, and now he's going to get you out again. How do you get out if you're not in? Yeah, right. Exactly. It's like he never got in. So uh, his and it's they never mentioned that. So it's always like this person obviously knows. You can say whatever you want and be infallible on TV. You know, the other dangerous thing, Bob, I find is on the internet. They have all these calculators, all these ways that they make you feel like you can just plug a couple numbers in and you know if you're ready for retirement or not, and that's just absurd. Yeah, I mean, and what happens when you punch the numbers in, you don't get the answer you like, go, ah, the thing must be wrong. You know, I'll just ignore it for now. Or or you get a little note that says, hey, you may have run that incorrectly, so you should fill out this form. And next thing you know, you're being bombarded by salesmen trying to get your account, you know, to trade options or buy commodities or to invest in an annuity. Right, exactly. Like they, they give you a financial calculator and then they come back with a solution that's not really to solve your problem. 
And I think you know, it's a really important thing to think about. Like, you know, when you're putting together a game plan, there's a lot of information out there. And I think the real value is working with somebody that can actually, you know, break through the noise and pick out the actual information that's important. And someone who's a financial expert is going to be able to do that. So you're not just drinking from the fire hose. You need someone to discern between good information and bad information. Absolutely, Ry. You know what? You are a unique individual. You have a unique situation. You need someone that you can trust that understands you, your family, and your needs. We all have different tax situations. We all have different reasons why things should be titled. But to make sure that you know the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, you got to have the beneficiary forms filled out correctly. You have to understand the family dynamics, and they change over time. Literally this week, I went to visit a client in the hospital, right? He was healthy as a horse, and suddenly, you know, he's terminal. And, you know, we had the whole family together. We're sitting down making sure everything is exactly as planned over the last 40 years. Yeah, and I think that's what it comes down to is, there's look, there's a lot of different game plans you can use to get to your goals. There's a lot of ways to cut a cake, as they say. You just have to pick one. And I think the important thing is is looking for something that's time tested. Like for instance, I mean, we see all the data, we look through all the financial news as well, just like everybody else. But because we have experience, we can tell you what information is good information, what information is bad. It's like you going online and trying to diagnose when you don't feel well, as opposed to going to the doctor. Yeah. How about some some of our our doctor clients tell us that uh, you know their patients come in now, they already know what's wrong with them, they've already diagnosed it, they've researched it, they've read all these articles, even know what the doctor's going to prescribe to them, you know, to cure them. <laughs> and they're not only a little bit wrong, Rye, they're yeah. very wrong. Same problem with the internet. You think all the answers to, you know, making money in the market is there. It's not. It's confusing. It's dangerous. And it can actually hurt you as opposed to help you. Yeah. And I think the thing we have to think about is your financial health is probably right up there after your actual physical health, Bob. You know, once if you're healthy, that's number one. But number two, after that, like, don't mess around with your finances. And now, if you're getting close to retirement or retired right now, more than ever, you need really, really good advice. And especially in a world where you, to your point, Bob, there's just so much advice out there. And, and Ryan, that's absolutely the point. If you have a fiduciary who's built a plan for you, who helps you to understand what you own and why you own it, they can point out to you which articles you should read and which ones you know, make sense and explain to you in the context of what your family's trying to do, not in the context of millions and millions of viewers who you don't know. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full, holistic financial review where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office, we're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can see your whole financial life at a bird's eye view. And then we can start looking at all the critical components to your retirement. We're going to look at everything from diversification. Did you get hit hard in the last couple of weeks as the market volatility picked up? Are you protected for retirement? What pitfalls or shortfalls do you have in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to protect your portfolio for retirement. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying in those annuities, mutual funds, life insurance products. Bob and I are going to show where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce cost so there's more money in your pocket for retirement, and we're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market like the last couple of weeks. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap for retirement, and we're going to show you how to do it with the least amount of taxes. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies our family has literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692 or simply click the get started button on bullish.com. 
feeling beaten down by complex numbers and fees? I must break you. Work out those financial muscles with the team at Payne Capital Management. So, Bob, let's tell the story of people we've seen exhibiting each of these mindsets as it relates to their financial plan and explain how each mindset can be very dangerous. And the one I think about right now is complacency. Mark has been very volatile in the last couple of weeks. And if you've been complacent, you're feeling the pain right now, no pun intended. Well, complacency is very dangerous, right? Because it gives you this false sense of security, right? We've had a big booming bull market for 10 years. And you see your portfolio going up thinking, why do I want to make a change? Why do I want to screw something up that's doing so well right now? Of course, it's not. Yes. And I imagine in the back of your mind, you know you should have made changes. You know you need to be making proactive moves, but it's just so hard to do when things are going well and you don't want to make a mistake. And the worst thing, Bob, is you don't want to start making decisions once the volatility hits and it's too late. Well, that, you know, the problem with that is, Rob, you make a panic decision. You, that's not really a decision. Your emotions you know, take you out of complacency. Then they put you into fear mode. And then you start making really bad decisions, emotional decisions and very negative decisions. Yes. And the thing that comes to your financial planning and investing is you always want to be proactive. You don't want to be reactive. That's why complacency like just can't fit into your financial plan. You always have to be making decisions, thinking about what's going to happen next, not based on your most recent experience. Well, that's what I love about our 360 financial portal, right? You can do what if scenarios. What if interest rates go to zero? What if the market becomes more volatile? What if you retire early? You, know, you need to be able to see these things in writing because it's that writing, those documents that overcome your fear, your complacency, and your overconfidence. Right. And also just building a portfolio that's built to go through this volatility. And odds are, if you've done really well, you probably have too much money at risk right now and you haven't made those adjustments, which means moving forward here, you've got to get smart about that, especially as you get close to retirement and in retirement. The other thing we see, Bob, is overconfidence, another very dangerous mindset to have when it comes to your investment portfolio. You know what's wrong with overconfidence, Rye? It, it allows you to make decisions which feel so right, but they're <laughs> so wrong. It'll, it'll allow you to make decisions to buy high, to overweight something that's done well. And a lot of that has to do with what we call hindsight bias, right? Whatever's happened most recently, you're convinced it's going to continue to happen. Oh, I see it all the time. And you're probably a culprit of this if you just own the S&P 500, right? We hear that all the time. Well, Warren Buffett owns the S&P 500. That's done great. I'm just going to put my money there. I don't need advice. And as you and I know, Bob, that can be a very dangerous strategy. Yeah, so true, right? And, and you know, you go back and look at what happened in 2001, 2008. You know, who needs the S&P 500? I can just own two or three of the best growth stocks. I have everything in Amazon or Google or Facebook. Huh. And then when you lose 6% in one day, you start to think, maybe... I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. Exactly right. And when the wind's at your back, that's when you're the most dangerous. And the other thing that can play into is if we own too much of our company stock, right? We think we're in the know. We work for a company and we think that nothing could ever go wrong. And as you and I know, things can go very wrong. I don't care what the company is. That's true. It's uh, over-concentration, single stock speculation. In my experience, most likely ends in tears. Doesn't get you to your goal. Why take the risk when you don't need it? The other thing, Bob, is we see right now, especially after 2008, is fear, right? A lot of us, we sold a lot of money out of the market in 2008. We never want to go through that again. And now for the last decade, we've been sitting with way too much money in cash. In fact, we've been stockpiling cash. And as you and I know, the rate of return on cash is trash. You're not getting very much return on that at all. And that's really problematic when you need to grow your money for retirement. Yeah. When you just look on the face of things, right? You look at your portfolio and you say, well, hey, my cash stays the same value every month, even with all this volatility in the stock market. How can that be a bad thing? Well, the problem is short term, you're right. But long term, we talk about it all the time, but the cost of living is going to go up. And over your retirement, you know, you're going to see your money half over the next 20 years. So every million dollars you have today becomes a half a million dollars. So if you're sitting in cash, you're going to be losing against that purchasing power in the future. And you need to grow your money out for the future. And money seeing cash just won't do that. That's the number one reason why you should be doing planning, why you should have a strategy based on your goals, because of that hidden, insidious tax we call inflation. And even though rates are you know, a little bit higher than they've been on, on money markets and cash, right? Even net of inflation right now, you're losing money. Well, Why would worse. anybody sit in a strategy where you're guaranteed to lose money every day? Well, it's worse, Bob, because now interest rates are going down again. So maybe you're getting 2.5% on your money market fund, but now it's down to 2%. 
So the return on cash is only going down, which only means even more so than ever, you need to get a return on your money. And sitting and waiting is just not going to do that for you. So true. You need to customize a strategy to achieve your goals, to overcome inflation, you know, to give you the highest probability of success. The other one, Bob, that we see a lot of times is just cynicism. I hear this all the time. The market's a scam. You know, I'm not going to put my money into this scam that's only going up and up and up for a little while, then it's all going to go down. Apocalypse now. That's not going to help you get to your goals either, having some sort of cynical viewpoint. Well, you know what, Ryan? I don't think cynicism is such a bad thing. You should be cynical of hot tips you get on the golf course or, you know, some, you know, deal where you're going to get a return that's way above the market, right? When you're going to have a um, an interest rate that's going to pay a 10% or 20% guarantee, or you're going to make all the upside, none of the downside. I think that's good cynicism, right? I think, but on the other hand, you know, you need to be informed and that way you can't be taken advantage of. That's right. And I mean, our business specifically, you have to do your homework. You want to work with what we call fiduciary. We talk about that all the time. You don't want to work with an old school broker. Find out if the person you're working with is a fiduciary. And that just simply means by law, they have to act in your best interest. If you go to the big brokerage houses, that advisor or broker you're working with doesn't actually have to work in your best interest. And now more than ever, you really need to have someone that's your advocate. And that's why in the new world of financial planning, Bob, working with fiduciary, in my mind, is really the prerequisite. You shouldn't be working with someone who's not. No, you need a fiduciary who works in your best interest. And you know, I think a good rule of thumb, if they can't explain that investment to you in five seconds, it's too complex, right? You always tell me simplicity over complexity. And the shinier the brochure, the more complex the explanation, the more cynical we need you to be. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's a full holistic review. It's the only review you're going to need in 2019. You know, grab your statements, put them in a shopping bag, stick them in a folder, pick up the phone, call or text us, set an appointment. We're going to review everything with you side by side. We're going to we're going to take your information. We're going to create your own 360 financial portal. So you'll have a window into your entire financial life. On top of that, we're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you diversified? Do you have too much of too much of a good thing in your portfolio that's going down dramatically this week? Are your fees in line with where the market should be today? There's a lot of hidden costs in those portfolios. We're able to reveal those costs and take that money out of your advisor's pocket, put it back in your pocket where it belongs. Income. You know, we need that income in to fill that gap once we're in retirement. And if you're retired right now, you want to have that income that will allow you to stay retired and give you that lifetime of income you can't outlive. And finally, we're going to tie it all together and answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money, or is your money going to outlive you, utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like you get from your point A to your point B to your goals to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or click the Get Started button on BeBullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at BeBullish.com. That's questions at BeBullish.com. Bob and I will answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. We have our in-studio, our man, Dan Irving, here to help us with questions. How's it going today, Dan? What's the good word? 
Ryan and Bob, I'm doing well. I just finished moving in with my bandmate about a week ago, and no noise complaints yet, so life is good. I give it another week. <laughs> All right, we got some good questions on the mailbag today. Our first one is from Jimmy on Garden City, Long Island. Jimmy says, Bob, I've been taking about 8% out of my portfolio each year, which I know is a lot, but I don't have any delusions about my life expectancy. I'm 69 years old and not in good health at all. Quite frankly, I think everyone I know would be shocked if I lived past 75. Whew, is this approach okay for me? Well, Jimmy, I think the uh, approach that when it comes to life is there's only two things that are certain, death and taxes. Now, we don't know what our taxes is going to be every year because the people in Washington keep changing that. And we certainly don't know, you know, when we're going to die. And, and you may be certain, but that's really a bad decision on your part because what if? What if you don't? What if you live longer? You want to be certain that you have the money in your portfolio to achieve, you know, your goals and your dreams. So, hey, Rye, isn't the perfect strategy to, you know, spend all your money and run out of money the day you die and have the last check you write bounce and that check should be written to the IRS? That is the perfect <laughs> plan, don't you think? The perfect plan, yes. We're, yeah, we haven't gotten that. We're not that good yet, Bob, but that would be the ideal. <laughs> so what flaws do you see in Jimmy's strategy where he's taking 8% out of his principal every year? He's not just taking return, he's taking principal because he's so certain that he only has six years left to live. Well, I think the problem, you know, first off, right, we could live a lot longer. You just don't know. You always want to plan out for more longevity than less. But we see this all the time, Bob. A lot of times that because we're living longer, your medical costs could go up for a long time if you're not as healthy. But that doesn't mean you won't be on God's green earth. And that could put even more stress on your portfolio than you initially anticipated. Well, not just on your portfolio. You know, you, you could wipe your portfolio out. Then you're putting the stress on your family. So you're putting that onerous on your family by not being you know, financially responsible. They have to pick up the cost, the medical costs. They can be huge in the last couple of years of your life. And I think that's why it's so important when you actually run projections for yourself. We talk about this on most episodes is you want to make sure that you factor in those health care costs. And I always ask this question when people come into our office, Bob, is if you had a quarter of a million dollars come out of your account, would that affect your re lifestyle for retirement? And you need to know the answer to that question because that's what medical costs could actually end up costing you in retirement. You know, I know a lot of you have done some financial planning, but 100% of the plans we reviewed over the last 10 years, not one person incorporated that health care cost in their lifetime into their projection. So it's something I agree with Rye. You got to look at right now. Thank you, Jimmy, for writing in. Our next question comes from Christine in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Christine writes, Ryan, I guess I should have known better, but for some reason I was under the impression that I wouldn't have to pay taxes on my Social Security benefits. Now I know better, but it seems like some people pay more than others. How does this work? Yes. I mean, Social Security is not that straightforward, and it's a very big decision you need to make for your retirement, and there's a lot of different ways to take it. And depending on when you take it, the taxes are different. Bob, I mean, the one thing I would say for most of the people we advise, we never have the same answer for how they should take Social Security. No, I'll tell you what, Ry, when it comes to Social Security, everybody's different. A lot of people think, wow, I thought this was going to be a big benefit. And when they find out they have to pay taxes on it, they're kind of disappointed. But, you know, this is where you got to do the planning. Make sure that you're only paying the tax that's necessary, right? As you always say, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but don't give him any of yours. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And I mean, in Social Security, taxes do play into that a lot because if you take it early at 62 for a lot of us, 62 and a half, depending on how much money you make, you will be penalized on that. But if you're not making money, you won't be penalized on that. So that could be one of the reasons why you take it early or don't take it early. At full retirement at 66, there's no tax penalties, but it's typically taxed at 85%. And the same thing goes at 70, but at 70, theoretically, maybe you're not working in your lower tax bracket. So as, as you can see, this gets complicated very, very quickly. So it's really important that you make that decision in the context of your overall plan. Don't just take a cookie cutter solution when it comes to Social Security. Right. Spot on. You know what, Christine? It's not just how you claim your Social Security, but it's also how you claim it in concert with your spouse. There's so many different ways to claim Social Security. It's complex. And I'll tell you what, people there are really good, but you don't want to get on the phone without an advisor who can help you to make the proper decision. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. 
It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.